We are live. We are live. We are live. What's up, everybody? Welcome. We're back. We're Portland Cocktail Week. It's your boy, Josh Davis of Brown and Balance. I am very, very happy to have my good friend, um, somebody I respect a whole, whole lot, somebody I just love to be around, my friend, my partner, um, Capri Robinson. What's happening? Hi. What's going to happen? Black History Month. I'm sorry? I said happy Black History Month. Happy yeah. Black History Month, baby. Happy, How you happy doing? Happy related birthday to you Thank as well. Thank you. You know what I mean? We're going to have a really good talk today about competitions. Now, I'm a, I haven't competed in a long time. Um, I've won my fair share of competitions. I've lost way more than I've won. But I've <laughs> always had a good time out of them. I've always learned something from them. I've always gained something for my career from them. So I'm really happy to have you as a person who's in the interview the best competition which is one of the best competitions. I totally loved and enjoyed watching it on Instagram. Like, I was at work when y'all yeah. had the competition. And, like, we literally had the Instagram feed from our phones hitting the TV so we can watch it live today. So I'm really, I'm really excited to hear from you, to see how you build community, because that's I think Chocolate City's best and Brown and Balance, that's what we're all about, is community and sharing ideas and collaboration. So without further ado, I'm going to get out the way because you are the expert in this, and we go at it. Because you got slides and pictures. I got slides and, and shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so I, okay. I really want to get out of the way and get my notepad out and get ready to listen to see what you're going to okay. bring to it today. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm super excited to be here. Um, Josh, you're amazing. Thank you for the great intro and for my birthday wishes. It was lit. It was lit. Um, but yes, um, I'm here to talk about um, competition building community, um, you know, and, you know, a, a great healthy competition, um, healthy practices um, is huge. And I think huge to a career growth um, and integral. So let's go ahead and get into the slides. Next slide. <laughs> all right. So overview. Um, this comp this is going to be all about kind of speaking from my experience with competitions and how I've seen them help my career growth. Um, and then I'm also going to be speaking about uh, why Chocolate City's Best was created, how we go into um, what we do for Chocolate City's Best competition, um, and how that also builds community. So I am Capri Robinson, as introduced. Um, my first ever competition was Bacardi Legacy, and I was horrible. <laughs> uh, I made it to regional somehow. Um, I got there. I remember Juan being there, and um, I was making my cocktail and trying to present this story, super nervous. And I remember just like trying to build my cocktail. Um, and you know, when you get to the point where you're like pouring your drinks and you pour it the first two too high. And so the last one was too low. And so I put my hand over ice to <laughs> put the cocktail uh, make them even. Um, and of course I didn't make it. So that was um, horrible first time. After that, I next competition, I, it didn't deter me. I was devastated. I was devastated, but it didn't, it, it didn't, it didn't stop me. Uh, the next competition I was in was a Hendrix competition. Um, that was awesome. Vance Henderson put that on and um, it was a pairing like you had a, um, a partner. It was craft bartenders paired with night um, life bartenders. And I had such a great time. We won people's choice for our um, cocktail. And like that was like my first taste of like, oh, man, like meeting new people, connecting with the industry in D.C. Um, and like so many people came out. It was such a movie. Um, and from there, I was like, "Ooh, I got to keep doing this. Um, and then after that, I think the next biggest one I won, which is this picture here, was DC Cocktail Queen. Um, and from there, you know, I just feel like my career kind of skyrocketed in, in a sorts of ways of like, I, um, <laughs> I had, um, I went to distilleries for the first time, um, just like competing next to women in the industry here in DC, meeting them for the first time, um, and just seeing what the world of beverage is and can be um, was so eye-opening. Um, from there, I did other local competitions, um, and one of the most notable, uh, notable one was um, Luxardo 
did a sour cherry gin competition. I won that and won a trip to Italy. So there's so many things that can be gained with comp competing. And I feel like I've been able to get those experiences. And all I want to do is share that with others. Next slide. Mm, yeah. Um, so why competitions? Um, one, they connected me with the industry in my city. I believe especially local competitions are really great to get to know people around you. Um, you know, DC is a small city, but there's still places that I've never seen or been to or ate at. And I feel like when I get in competitions, I always find somebody new and I'm like, wow, like how did I not see you yet? And so I think that's really great is it connects you with industry and then global ones also connects you with industry all over the world which is awesome creating that network um competitions you know they allowed me to visit distilleries that led me to understand and love the process of how spirits are made i feel like there are so many ways to educate yourself with competitions um and grab some knowledge be it from the, the competitors next to you the process that you're going through or winning and getting an experience that you've never been to um, like I said before, they brought me to experiences outside of the country. Um, so being able to visit Italy, you know, for the first time because of Luxardo was really huge. And, you know, one of the things that we like to do for Chocolate City is Best is um, gift trips. They're not out of the country yet, but, you know, gifting that experience to be able to go somewhere is really huge. Um, once again, broadening the network of industry buddies. So knowing people from all over the world, all over the country, um, is a way that competitions build community and keeps it, you know, becoming stronger. Um, one thing that competitions do the best, um, especially when it's geared with, you know, the right type of um, criticism is showing you where you need growth in your craft, right? So I feel like every competition I ever did, I learned something new either about the way that I make cocktails or even the way that I present, you know, or the way that I connect with people. Um, and I found that to be very huge for me in competitions that I feel like I'm always going to grow. It's challenging myself to kind of step out of my comfort zone um, and learn something new. Um, and then competitions show us how we can like, you know, give huge experiences, not only for the competitors, but for the people attending, right? Um, kind of like, not even, it's kind of like a party too, right? Like where people can come cheer you on. Um, it's not just your, you know, your standard, here's a bar, here's a patron exchange. It's people coming to kind of see us, you know, have pride in what we're doing. And I love that experience for people to see that we are, you know, like doing our thing as bartenders. We're um, keeping that up. Um, and connection with fellow competitors is like no other. Um, and I found this a lot with a lot of competitions I've been in where, the competitors I'm next to are like, like we're in this together. We're in the thick of it. You know, we, sometimes there's been times where I'm like, and we'll talk about this a little later where I've like need garnishes or something, and, you know, and competitors are always there. And I feel like here in DC, like our competitive, our competition is pretty healthy. So um, next slide. There we go. We're getting into local competition versus global competitions. Um, so local competitions are where I found my love for competing. Um, competing here in D.C. allowed me to continuously see the talent that was here in my own city. Um, we have healthy, fun competitions here. Um, so one of the competitions that we have here that happens every year um, is called the um, Ricky Competition, um, thrown by the D.C. Craft Bartenders Guild. And I feel like that's just one of the ones where you know, people work together kind of to one, you know, have pride in our, our, um, the, the cocktail of our city, which is the Ricky, but also just to have pride in like, you know, making it new, constantly innovating how the Ricky can be seen. And it's always such a good time. That's one of the ones that I like to work the background of and just like see how people get creative. Um, and I just here in DC, I feel like we were able to, we compete, like, um, it's not a, any kind of like hateful com competition. It's always like really good self-growing competitions. And like I was saying before, like there's been times where I didn't have 
garnishes. Like I, I forgot my mint or I forgot some bitters or I forgot these glass, this glassware. And like, you can go around to your fellow competitors and be like, yo, do you have this? Oh my God. Can, can I use that too? Like, and it worked out. Um, and I just feel like that sense of camaraderie there is really huge, um, when competing and it, and it doesn't feel as though like, you know, you're creating any type of, um, like you're being an outsider, you you can't ask for help. Where I feel like here in DC, you can. Um, I think also like before our competitions or before, before competition in general um, in local competitions, you can get together with people around you, people in your city and have um, time to bounce off ideas off each other. I know some people feel as though like you can't, right? You wanna keep your, your recipes a secret. You wanna keep like, but don't like, literally go out there, whoever you know is competing with you, be like, yo, can I show you my cocktail? What do you think? And I've done that before, which I think just helps to create like, oh, we can go to each other for help if it's in the competition or even out. And just meeting new people in your city, right? Kind of connecting with them is really huge, I think. Um, so that you just want new places to go, um, new people to talk to, new opportunities in, in the city that you're in. Um, and I just think like all, always constantly building a network is a really huge thing, um, at least for me. Um, global competitions. So these are, I don't do many global competitions, um, but I've definitely spoken to people that have like, uh, you know, you know, the really big, the really big boys <laughs> of the competitions um, and the global top competitions are definitely a different type of beast. Um, you're competing against a much larger pool of people, right? So people that aren't from just your city, but all over, if it's national, if it's regional or even global, like they're, you know, that's just a bigger pool of people. I feel like global competitions, you're putting a lot more time in, um, a lot more um, pressure is kind of put on these competitions. And that can be a little bit stressful. But I think, you know, when you have that stress a little bit and you have someone else that's going through it with you, it's something that you can find that support system a little bit there. Um, and you know, the, you know, going through the same things where you all are like, oh man, like we're doing this, we're doing that. How you doing? That creates a bond that can't be really broken. Right. So now we're building, um, international and cross the nation type of community there, right. With people that you are bonding with because of the, the, um, experience that you're going through with these big competitions. And also with that, right? Global competitions, like no matter where you are, like if you made it to the top 50, if you made it to the top four, wherever you did, you are now in the public eye, the global eye, right? People are like, whoa, like who is that person? And I think what's big about competitions, especially this is for local and global competitions, is that no matter what, no matter where you made it, people are going to see you. And that can create opportunities far and wide, right? People could want you to start doing classes or be featured on their Instagram posts or feature for, you know, a magazine posts. Like, I think that that is always what's great about competitions that you're kind of, kind of being put on this stage to be like, yo, that person is the best of the best. And so we got to have them. <laughs> That's what I really love about both local and global competitions. Uh, next slide. So I kind of wanted to talk about unhealthy competition practices, um, which I think is what deters many people from wanting to compete. Um, and in this conversation, I want to encourage you to. Um, so I, I, I didn't want to have this conversation without noticing, you know, why some people are don't want to. Um, so one of the things that I've seen before um, are that competitors are solely picked based on where they work. Um, and this could be like your, the market that you work in is like the top market for whatever brand it is. Right. Or your bar, like goes to cases of this brand. So like, boom, that person's a shoe in. Um, I personally feel as though that's just, you know, it, it's not fair, you know, the, that that's not a fair way of judging, especially when people are putting their hearts into their, um, 
they're putting their hearts into their applications and, you know, doing things like that. You know, you always want to be on the same level. Competitors being chosen just because they know the no, you know, you know who you're supposed to know. Like, oh, like, yeah, I don't put my name in, but girl, you know me, you know, like that type of like, I don't like that. <laughs> I I personally think that is a very unhealthy. Once again, it's not allowing for a fair, um, um, a level playing field. And, you know, that kind of, that creates discouragement mostly. Um, and favoritism, which we don't need that, that, that breaks community. That doesn't bring us together at all. Um, when it's being chosen, which is going into the next one, which is when it's being chosen for popularity, um, over quality. And, you know, these competitions, at least for me, competition should be about wanting to put the best thing forward, right? Not just falling on, oh, I know people are going to just like me. Like, you know, I, you know, look this way. I sound this way. Like, you know, I'm dipper dapper. I can do this. No, like really like I, what I'm putting in this glass, the story that I put together with this glass, like that should be what everything should be chosen off of and judged off of. And sometimes it's not. Um, one of my biggest things, I think, for comp unhealthy competition practices is unconstructive judging. Um, woo! This is huge for me because I feel as though I've, I've found myself either watching competitions where the judging just wasn't constructive. Like, you know, giving feedback from the judging, right? I think there's been a, there's a lot of competitions where you don't even see feedback. You don't even know why you got the points. You don't know why you are where you are. And that doesn't help you to grow as a person and doesn't help you to grow in your career, right? Like you're just, now you're just feeling defeated without understanding what could be done better. And I just don't like that. I think if we're going to put ourselves in these challenging positions that we should, you know, really be able to find out how to grow, how to be better. Um, you know, if it was, it, it could be anything. It literally could be anything. Speak a little bit louder. Um, this didn't connect. I, you lost me a little bit here. I would love to see this maybe next time from you, or, Hey, here are some notes on how to balance this cocktail. Here, you know, like these, like I'm very big on constructive criticism and I just feel like we see so many times where judging just isn't giving anywhere or any room for growth. It's just like, no. So I think that's a bit un unhealthy practice. Um, and most of these uh, are unhealthy because it's not geared towards the growth of the competitor, right? What I've been talking about. Um, the attributes in the competition are geared towards an image of brand or the brands, which, you know, are points of some competition, right? Like the point is to like raise the brand up really. Um, but the thing that happens here is that it breeds individualistic idea of winning, right? Like I'm the sole person, I'm better than the rest of these people, I'm this and that, and being in, in and then breeding what we don't really love, right? Star tenders, <laughs> you know? And I just feel like that creates a mentality of, um, you know, just feeling like they're better than everyone else. Or I get to walk in these rooms because I'm a star tender and woo, 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 you know? <laughs> if that makes any sense, like I, it's not for me. It's not for me. And I just think that we can do without star tenders. We can do without this indiv individualistic ideal of winning and kind of come together and win together um, and grow together in these competitions. And I just, you know, we, we need to be, we need to be going for that. <laughs> Next slide. So healthy competition practices, things that I want to implement more in competitions and want to see hopefully more in competitions. Um, one, which is I, I really love most and big, competitors are given the tools needed to succeed in the competition. Um, this is help to acquire ingredients. I mean, how many times have you spent dollars, you know, dollars on 
prep, on R and D, on having to travel with your ingredients. Like, I mean, you know, you want to, you know, make your own things, but like, how much is that coming out of your pocket? I think helping competitors to like not have to also like pay for what this experience is really helps for them to focus on what they're doing. Education on the spirits and the tools. Um, uh, for example, one time in our Chocolate Best competition in two years ago, 2019, um, we showed them how to use liquid nitrogen, right? Like we were like, this is how you use, it was real quick though. So I, I could have done a better job. <laughs> of showing them but you know it was just like um this is how you chill a glass really quick if you want to get it cold right because the place that we were um competing in or they were competing in didn't have glassware in um cold already so like this is how you can get it cold for the judge so things like that um education on the the spirit at hand making sure they understand tasting notes of what they're making so they can get a better idea of, of what to do giving them the story of the spirit so they can connect the story to the glass like this is really huge presentation guidance um just like you know i think that having conversations on what you want to see out of a presentation is really huge, right? Which can also help us behind the bar too, um, where you are, you know, presenting your cocktail, being able to tell that story very elegantly um, and connecting the story to the glass and connecting the story to you. I think that when we're able to clearly state in the competition of how we want to see it or what you should be looking for um just helps the competitor feel a little bit more confident um with each other and the connection to helpful minds um so this could be trying as a competitor builder trying to connect them to mentors or connect them to the brands or connect them to people that you've seen compete before where it's just like yo you should go talk and try to ask them some questions because they know what's up and it's going to help you. I think giving tools needed to succeed in competition just helps confidence for competitors and confidence, you know, to do it together. Um, of course, competitors being chosen for a completing task that they're given regardless of where they work, where they're from, like ability, popularity. No, we're going to judge what we ask the task to be. Um, all those who've entered have an equal chance of making it to the winning spot. So, you know, if competitions have obstacles, but they need to make sure that we all need to make sure that the obstacles are um, an, a level playing field, right? Where everyone feels like they are not at a disadvantage, more disadvantage than someone else. Like everyone can make it through and have a potential, um, can potentially win, right? constructive judging. I just talked about this. <laughs> so an example of constructive judging or being able to create constructive judging. Um, and I can show this too. I, I guess I should have posted, I should have put my, what we do for talk is best, but I have our, our, our paperwork for judging has lines for like the judges to say why they gave, you know, different things. And we encourage that sometimes some judges still don't like writing anything. We're still trying to encourage more, but like say what it is. Why did you give a two? Why did you give a five? You know, what, what, what is the reason? And we put lines there and then we immediately give our papers to the competitors so they can know what's going on. Also, I've heard this before where judges don't want them to know because <laughs> they don't want to be approached. But I'm just like, if you're going to judge, you're going to judge. You said what you said. So say it to their face type of thing. <laughs> but y'all know me. That's how I am. Um, so it's it's huge for me for the competitors to be able to come up to you afterwards while you're, you know, if, if or, or a later date or an email or something or something and just be like, I saw your notes, can, you know, can I get a little bit more from you or what do you think can help me? Because at the end of the day, competition should be about growing. It should be about getting better at what we're doing, perfecting our craft, perfecting um, ourselves and our careers. And so I think that's healthy. I think it helps and it's communication and communication is great. <laughs> Um, also, healthy competition practices, striving to create an environment where competitors can grow together and want to encourage each other. Um, 
what I think this means the most to me is just like, you know, the environment for the competition isn't like completely stressful that, you know, it, or it doesn't feel like we're separating the competitors, right? We want the competitors to know that they're in this together, bounce ideas off each other, you know, let's talk, let's prep together. Let's, you know, put you in a situation. Let's go to dinner together. Let's, you know, let's, let's talk, let's get this out. Cause everyone's going through the trenches together. And so why not be like, yeah, girl, you got this. I got this. You got this, you know, at the end of the day, yes, there's one winner, but let's do this together. Let's grow. And you know, that itself builds community, right? Knowing you can go through something with someone and support system is there. Um, it's super huge. Next slide. <laughs> I'm having so much fun. I wish I could talk to you guys. I can hear you. I mean, <laughs> trust me, I'm over here. Look, taking notes. <laughs> to you. But all you guys out there watching, Capri is dropping some gems and some knowledge and some bombs. So if you have any questions, please pop them in the chat. We'll get the questions straight to the to the expert, Capri, and, and, and get them going. But I'm enjoying all this content, Capri. This is okay. a lot of things that I've thought over the years as being a competitor. I've never host of the competition, like you all, you all have. I've always thought about possibly doing it, but these are all very constructive things. I'm going to say okay. it like that. I'm going to say it like that. Very constructive okay. things. <laughs> Wait, I'm trying not to be, like, you know, too petty. But <laughs> hey, 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 check this out. Capri is Black History Month. Be petty. You're right. <laughs> we'll leave names out of it. <laughs> you know, you know me. I, I, I'll, I'll never forget a conversation you and I had at Can't Run Them Up, I think, your first year. And I remember telling you, always say whatever you want to say. Don't yes. care about what nobody thinks about it. If that's your truth, live in your truth. And it's Black History Month on top of that. Be You're petty. right. You're Be right. Petty. You know what I mean? That's how I feel. Yeah. So real. Because things, <laughs> the, thing, the funny thing about it, like, things will never change until those real hard conversations are had. Like some of the true. things you said about judging and about um, people that kind of win the competitions because of the bar they work at. As mm -hmm. black competitors, and I'm just gonna keep it real, as black competitors, those are always things that have been in my mind because yeah. all the competitions were held that I've been in were held at certain bars. And there were yeah. certain bartenders at that bar that kind of had that 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 shine and that spotlight at that moment. I'm like, man, it don't matter what I do, you know what I mean? That person's yeah. gonna win. I've I've been in the competition, I'm not gonna say what brand, but I'd never forget. Um, it was the the I the international bartender rules mm -hmm. and the judges before the competition told me, hey, don't worry about doing that. We're not really looking at technical as much. We just really want to see the cocktail. So okay. I, threw, I threw all that out the window said, cool, I'm going to go to what Josh does. I'm going to make a great drink. And I right. had just tell me I, I had the best cocktail out of all the competitors, but I wasn't technical enough. I said, but y'all told me before. Yes. You know what I mean? Okay. Now, we, can't be, we can't be running it back. Like, you no. See but the person who won the competition worked at the bar we was at. So I'm really mm -hmm. glad you brought that out because I was like, that was always something I thought about. I never had a platform to say it until now. You beat me to it. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a huge thing. I mean, you see it a lot. Um, you you see it a lot, you yeah. know, and it's not it's not great. And then you get the statements like that where it's like, you know, your drink was great. You 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 were the favorite, and it was like, well then. How do we get here? <laughs> because if it's a, if it's a cocktail competition, and I make Period. the best this wasn't cocktail. A, you love this bar competition. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I make the best cocktail in the cocktail competition. Shouldn't that be the W? I don't know. Right. I mean, I, I played competitive sports all my life. I know if I score more points than you, I win. If I'm better than you, I win. Right. So, you know, I but that's the thing. Definitely. And I think you know, going back to like the constructive judging. And I think point systems are really huge where you can see where things are instead of it just being just like, oh, well, I think this and like, let's just, let's just choose. I'm really big on point systems where it's like, I need you to give a value to this so that people, you are knowing why you're judging this way. And when this person sees this paper, they know why they got judged that way, you know? So that's huge. So we're building community there between the judges and the competitors, right? Not just competitor to the competitor, but the judges and competitors, which is huge to me. We need transparency. Right. We, just, we need more transparency. I think that's what it is more than anything. Like way more transparency because 
like I, there were people, I'm, I'm not gonna name them, but there were people I just, I didn't like them no more because they were judging the competition. I never understood like what happened. And like you said, some of them don't want you to be, to approach them. And you know yeah. me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk right up to you. Like, what okay, was Okay, me too. <laughs> what happened? Um, I did another competition where I had the complete opposite. I came in second, but the judges were so transparent and so open that I knew exactly what I should have improved on. And then the next, the very next competition I got in, I won it because I was able to have that transparency and that 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 moment of, okay, dude, this is great, but if you just would have adjusted this or just changed the glass, it was really it came down to my glassware. Mm-hmm. I should have said, if you'd have put that in the rocks instead of putting it in the Collins, you'd have Work blown it out, out stretched it out a little too far, so we didn't get the full texture of the cocktail. Yeah. You know, what I, mean? and I was like, oh, okay, cool, wrote that down. Let me remember that yeah. as I'm preparing for the next one and it's just you know i just really feel like if we can get that transparent moment and that that rapport between the judges and the competitors a little bit better mm-hmm. i think overall the whole system of competitions will be 10 times better i agree i i mean you know so many people are always left with the question of why um and i know i'll be in my bed tossing about the fucking why <laughs> all the time sorry yeah. it, it, sorry cursing but you know i just yeah, like I so i encourage okay i encourage to answer that answer those whys for people you know yeah. what i'm saying i mean yeah. i know when it gets to a global level that that could definitely be a bit harder especially for like mm-hmm. entry mode but when it gets down to like the the 15 the 10 the 20 whatever Tell these people why. So they're not going home, like, tossing and turning and trying to figure out what they could have done when you could have just told them what they could have done so the next yeah. time they can be better. Like, we want us to be better in the industry in general. So let's just do that. Transparency yeah. is really huge, I feel, for judging. Yeah. Um, the competition breeds that. Competition breeds everybody to be better. Because, like, yeah. there's, there's one person. I can say his name. There's one person in Chicago. My brother, Josh Pearson. Like, good dude. Love Josh Pearson to death. I hated him for like five years because he won like every competition in yeah. Chicago. But he became for me, he became my measuring stick. Like I wanna I wanna be right there because he keeps winning. So let me figure out what he's doing to win. And I'm gonna keep competing against him, against him, against him, against him to get better. And I'm gonna hit the judges, I'm gonna talk to people. And what should I do? And I'm hit the crowd and where should I go? And it's like it's gonna make the entire, like you said, make the entire industry better overall. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you know, I I love you, Josh. If you're listening, by the way, we're good. We've been friends ever since. <laughs> yeah. Competition no, time. I used, to, oh, I used to hate seeing him coming. Oh, I used to hate it. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like that. It'd be like that though. Like you're like, oh, okay, here we go again. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. It was like, oh, let me get my let me. Hey, I gotta put my boots up a little tighter, and I gotta get. I gotta make sure I'm on point because, you know, that person he constantly wins. He I see what he's doing to win, so I'm trying to emulate that, but put my own style on it of course right. never, never gonna bite what he does but it just it gave me that that measuring stick like okay all right i'm on it now you know birdman hand rub i'm on it let's get it you know what i mean so yeah so yeah let's get it going all right so that was okay. us i know you got some more slides though right i just a, a couple more just a couple more slides just, I'm getting knowledge like my notes on my phone is full right now i'm getting oh good full. okay this i love it do a bnb competition and i might need to call you and pay you for look the- God, that's what i was gonna say at the end of this call me anytime i love talking about competitions mm-hmm. i love talking about how to make them great so but when you call, call her when you call her make sure she has an invoice because we pay black women okay thank you yes, you yes! i'm not gonna i would never ever ask you to give me the, the info for free and nobody okay. else better do that either so right that's real that's real that's real, child. I'm putting a number on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just a couple more slides, y'all. I'm gonna go into why we created, or yes, why we created Chocolate City's Best. Um, well, first and foremost, it was to fill a void that wasn't being filled. Um, we wanted to focus on bartenders of color. That was huge for us. Um, that is what we do, you know, and um within our competition we wanted to give them tools and experiences that weren't being handed to us and this was very huge we just so 
thinking about what we should do for the competition was like, well, you know, I think we need to give, which is here down at the bottom, um, we need to connect them to mentors. Let's bring mentors in for the week and, you know, pair them with them and let them talk to them and, you know, get this time so they can have the best um, cocktail at the end. Let's connect them with the brand ambassadors that we love here, you know, and um, where they can use to work with them further down the line or work with them now or so they can talk and get that education from the brands. Um, dinners, brand dinners, y'all. First off, they're great and <laughs> I love them, but I don't think everyone knows that they happen. So I really wanted to implement that. We wanted to implement that for Chocolate City's Best. Um, and it's something that we do. I think we do like two or three, two or three, but like, yes, we want brands to feed us and, and have them in, in places where, you know, the competitors can see how the cocktails are happening in certain establishments and encourage them to kind of think about, um, just inspire them really. Right. So recently we went to a place called Cafe Riggs, this last competition with Westward and I mean, some of the things that came to the table um, were fascinating on the flavors that they use, the techniques that they use. And I just think that brand dinners can do that because it allows, you know, for the bartenders to kind of have fun with what they have in front of them um, with the support behind them. So, you know, wanting to kind of create that magicalness and then dinners bring people together, right? So, we we do that for Toxic's Best, where it's like, okay, we know y'all competing. We know we're putting you through these challenges. Let's sit down tonight. Let's talk. How's your week going? Or, you know, because it's a week long, y'all. But <laughs> how's your days going? You know, how are you feeling? Um, and then talk to your fellow competitors and being near them. So that was really huge that we implemented that um, for the competition seminar. So we have a whole day where we give you classes. And, and most of the classes are geared towards, you know, what you can take beyond the competition, right? And then also we put you in a small classroom where you get to connect with those educators that we brought on board. Um, so this past year, we talked a, a bit outside of the competition and kind of more about like self-marketing. We talked about um, how to build brands, how to do your bios, and just kind of information that helps you grow um, just as a professional in general. Um, and I just feel like for Chocolate Best, our competition is a lot more. And I, I, you know, we kind of make it blatant of what you get from a competition where I feel like when you're competing in different things, these things are technically happening, right? But it's not like blatant, like, this is what you're getting. And I feel as though when you're not telling someone that that's what they're getting, it can be missed, right? And it, I guess in its own way, that's like a game that can be played, but I'm not trying to be a net, we're not trying to network game out here, right? We're really trying to give people the tools to succeed so that we're a better industry as a whole and in your market and around the world. So that's really huge. Um, and we do insightful conversations. So we have a panel every year during our um, competition week. And it's just to have those hard conversations um, and challenge people in their thought processes. And I just feel like also when you have hard conversations with people, you're growing together, right? Being able to really think within yourself and then hear other people's ideas of, of those um, conversations are just, it just helps to like, you know, shed some, do some unlearning and learn some, some better healthy things. And if you do that together with people around you, you can only be stronger. Um, so that's really huge of what we do um, at Chocolate City's Vest. And then the biggest thing I think is to motivate, motivate, <laughs> sorry, y'all, motivate a group, a uh, group of black and POC folks who try, who feel they want to give up or feel they don't see enough room to be represented, right? since since creating Chocolate City's Best, I've had so many come to me about giving up, right? S especially Black women, where it's like, I can't do this no more. I can't play these games. I can't keep trying to truck through this mud. I can't keep taking on these microaggressions. I can't keep taking on the aggression. Um, I'm ready to go. Like, how do you do it? And you know, why do you do it? And so in Chalk City's Best, 
um, especially during the competition, we really want to show how you can thrive in the industry. I mean, those things, there's going to be those things still, but like kind of like understanding how to navigate those, that world without it killing that fire that's within you. Um, and then doing it as a group too. And so it's, it's huge for me to continuously motivate black people, people of color in the industry, because we need to be here. <laughs> you know, we need to be seen. We need to know that these opportunities exist um, and connect you to them. And I, you know, it's, it's a huge thing to continuously motivate, right. And show you the people that are thriving, show you the people that are doing, doing it, connecting you to those people. Um, that is a huge thing for that. And then also like not being able to see the room to be represented. Like that saddens me when I hear these stories, it makes me sad that you know, they don't get to see that reputation representation where they are. So I just want to show them where, it, you know, where like, that it is happening and it can happen and it can happen in your city. Like, how do we, how can, you know, how, how can we make it better? And sometimes I don't have all the answers or I can't, you know, do something from my seat, but I try to connect people to people that can help them find that way. And I feel like when we bring people from all over the country to here to DC, we're giving that motivation. We're giving you um, people to be near to support you and create that support group. Um, and then teach wisdom about the industry. This is more about, um, you know, kind of back with what I was saying with the motivation, but also letting people understand like, you know, the world of our industry, it got some issues. And so <laughs> let's, you know, be mindful of that and keep our eyes wide and open, but know that you can navigate through them and you don't have to abide by the game or whatever is out here. And this, these, these networking moves type things that I'm not great at <laughs> myself. Like we want to give wisdom to that, that this is, you know, I feel like in our Chalk City's best, that's what we want to do is just be like, that world is there, but we can thrive around it and above it. You know what I'm saying? So, yes. Next slide. Um, so how CCB has created growth and community. Um, each year, our competitors grow strong together. So we... Um, we get a house for our competitors to stay in. Um, our competition is five days long, um, and there's different activities that they do together. So uh, we go on distillery tours, we do um, dinners, uh, we have challenges. Like the beginning of the week is like a twist and a turn that they didn't know that they were going to go through, but they like do it together. And then like, it gives, it gives something to like talk about and be like, wow, can you believe that we're doing this? And then, you know, we just encourage them to speak with each other, be near each other. Um, and so, you know, when you go through these, when you spend a lot of time with someone for a while, right? Like you just start to build that camaraderie. Um, and that's something that we find very huge at Chalk City's Best. Um, after they compete, this has been something that has been so beautiful to see and has happened organically. Um, but after they compete, they still speak and network um, and they help each other grow. So an example of this is Lindsay. Um, Lindsay was just in our 2021 competition and she's been sending out um, Portland Cocktail Week and Lush Life. Y'all have been doing um, the whiskey classes and the whiskey um certifications and Lindsay's been sharing that with the group like y'all get into this y'all let's do this and like you know they're excited about Camp Runnemuck and they're excited about these opportunities and like it's been like Yo! like it's been super dope because they're helping each other do it and these are all black and people of color like you know what I'm saying so that's even huger that's like we're encouraging each other to get into these opportunities that are here in this industry and, and like it makes me so excited. <laughs> I like, I'm like, so into it. Um, another example is Mo last two years ago, after the competition was done, Mo Peacock, if you all know her, she, um, invited everyone to come to DC to do this bartending class with El Silencio. So not only is she using 
the brand connection that we brought, you know, to them, but she's also using that community to be like, y'all, let's do some education outside of the competition together. Let's see each other. And not everyone can make it, but some did, and some people did it on Zoom. Um, and so that like is huge that we get to see that organically happening from Chocolate City's best. And it, it like pumps up my blood and I love it. And I think that's like competition should breed that, right? The people that you go through the competition with, you should want to do more things with and encourage them to, you know, do more things in their, in their um, professional growth. Um, Toxie's best competitors are getting recognized. Um, Brown and Balance, like we seen them on their, on the Instagrams. I was like, yeah, like that was great. I'm sorry. I'm so, I'm super excited about these things. Um, Sorrel um, has been posting Black Bartenders and some of them were Chuck's best um, competitors. And like, it was just really, really beautiful. Um, two years ago, The Blend reached out to some of the Chuck's best competitors and they were able to speak with The Blend and get some, um, um, some writing done and some articles done. And that was just great. Linda was able, Linda, our winner from two years ago, she was able to do um, a video thing. Um, Manny, sorry, I'm reading the contents. <laughs> yes, Manny, yo, I love Manny. Let's talk, Manny. I love you so much. Um, but yes, like it's, 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 these things are really huge to see because that's literally what we're trying, we're striving to do, right? If we're saying we're trying to push um, black folks, people of color to the forefront of the industry, that's what we're trying to do. And seeing the, these national recognitions happen is like big, right? Cause you're like, wow, we're doing it. Like they're getting, they're being seen, they're being seen. So super dope. Um, and like these types of recognitions, they lead to more opportunities, right? People, you know, are reaching out like, who can I get to do this? And who can I pay to be here? Um, and, you know, who wants to apply for this and that? And so when you see that they're being seen, they're now being chosen for these things. And that's what we want to keep doing as Chaka State's Best. And I just think that creates career growth and doing it together and seeing the community around the nation is super huge. Um, and then CCB creates motivation to want to go and compete in other competitions. This great example of this is Lonnie. Um, Lonnie was our pat last year winner. Um, she just recently won a local competition and now she's going on to the Mount Gay competition. And you can just see that she's like, you know, being out there, being hungry. I even know that other competitors are doing other competitions too and applying, right. You know, like knowing that they, they can, they can apply, they can do this, they can get into it, um, is huge and fun. And I, it, it, it's got me all bubbly inside. <laughs> so shout out to all the competitors that have come through. Shout out to all the people that apply. Like, you know, we want to give this experience that makes you want to keep going and, you know, want to grow and, and not give up on our industry because it's, it's some good stuff to be had. And there's some great things. There's a lot that needs to change, but you know, this is a part of it. And so shout out to all y'all. Y'all do. <laughs> Next slide. Um, so this is the conclusion. This is, the, this is my last slide. Um, so pretty much I hope that this conversation motivates you to give competitions a try or a retry. Um, maybe you see where you can create a competition in your city. I think, you know, competitions that are bred by bartenders are dope. Not saying that well, no, yeah, yeah, bread by bartenders. Like, bartenders creating competitions are, like, they, they have the right intentions behind it or can have the right intentions behind it. Um, competitions can help to fill a void if the right intentions are put into it. Oh, look at me. <laughs> also, remember when you're competing, have fun. Um, you know, building community can be also fun. Building competition can be fun. Like, put that joy in there. Um Every part of the path of a competition is an opportunity to grow and connect. So that's, you know, applying, finding out who else applied, you know, um, getting into the top, being with those people, like growing with them, connecting yourself to the brands, connecting yourself to the judges, connecting yourself to the people that created the competition. Just like do it. Um, so, yeah, let's keep doing it. <laughs> that's all, y'all. <laughs> that was dope. Yeah, that was dope. I, I love that. Have fun. Um, that's, yes. I just, I'm, I'm 
ultra, you know me, I'm ultra competitive. So I never have fun unless I <laughs> so I have fun. Yeah. Well, I never did. It's like I just I wanted to win. You know what I mean? So and you know how it is. Like you said, there are things in our industry that need to change. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us that look like us work in certain neighborhoods and then we're competing against people that work in other neighborhoods. So you know, we want to win. So I never yeah. really had fun, fun. I think that's something that I was definitely lacking when I was competing, you know, heavily and more more frequently. So thank you for that. Stay Absolutely. Here. But we got some questions for you. We got some okay. For you. All right, so we're going to quick fire. I know we got to get out of here in a minute because Super Producer is going to get us on time. So you don't okay. know how. You know, we always went over on Brown and Balance Friday. So <laughs> we're going to be a little more professional. We're going to be excited. Yeah, yeah, we're going to be right on time. So Super Producer going to have to count us down. All right. I got so, you. I got you. Fire, fire, fire. fire. How do you approach, and I'm a, I want you to do personal. Don't do Chocolate Seeds best. We're going to hit Caprice. Okay. How okay. do you approach a judge after the competition for your feedback? Okay. So I walk to them, <laughs> look them in their eye, and I just say, hi, thank you so much. What did you think about my cocktail? Do you mm -hmm. have any advice for me for next time? Um, am I able to connect with you, contact you later on if I have more questions? Okay, just direct, right to the point. Get right to the, I'm very direct. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> All right, second That's question. This is something I definitely need to know because I never did this the proper way because of my competitiveness. But how would you shake off a loss and still support the winner? Screaming for them. Okay. <laughs> Woo! Go! Yeah, the cheering, the cheering for someone else allows me to uh, one scream <laughs> to also just like get like, wow, like someone got that opportunity. It wasn't me yet. And if I'm cheering for them, it could be me next. So that's yeah. how I shake off a loss and support the winner. Um, yeah. I just cheer and Much shake their fun. hand, give them a hug, like all that stuff. Like you, you deserve that. Like you obviously deserve that. You up there. Yeah, much more graceful than me. I'll shake their hand and then I leave. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm out of here. I'm Bulls, Knicks in the 90s. I'm not. I'm shaking hands, say, oh, good game. And then I'm out of here. Um, <laughs> and then I got one last question for you. And I okay. think this is a really good one. What are some golden rules you have for yourself when you're competing? Um, good sportsmanship. I think this is for anything. Great sportsmanship. Like, I, once again, like I just said, I cheer for other folks. I mm -hmm. encourage them before they go on stage. I talk to them, like, you nervous? Like, what's up? Like, I get into conversations with my fellow competitors. Um, next thing is, um, I, I don't, I try not to be a sore loser. I, it hurts me a lot. I guess that falls, that falls under good sportsmanship too. But, you know, it hurts. But at the same time, just like, fuck it. Like, we're gonna go to the next one. Like, just like, third off, it's fine. Um, mm -hmm have fun. Like I said, I'm really big. Like if I'm going to compete, we're about to have a blast. We're about to have fun no matter what's going on. And I think when I have fun, I get the nerves out and then I'm also able to um, present better. Right. If I'm having fun and I'm feeling my cocktail and I'm feeling my story, then the, the judges are too. And the people next to me are going to be like, yeah, like she sold that cocktail. Like, yeah. So those are, I would say the top three rules for me. Word. I love it. That's cool. Well, those are three questions we have for you. Um, okay. I want to thank you for your time, one, and, and your knowledge. This was amazing. I appreciate awesome. you. Um, Yay, tell the people, thank you. Tell the people how to find you if they want to get in touch with you via DM. Absolutely. DMs for business. You know what I mean? Got to put that <laughs> there. Like, oh DMs for business. You know what I'm saying? It's the memes. But yes, y'all, y'all can find me at capri.possible on Instagram, chocolate.cities.best on Instagram. You can also find me at my um, podcast, Soul Palette Podcast. Check us out. We try to, you know, grow and we're talking about just black women shit and having fun. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. also at Empowering the Diner with me and my girl Erica. You can Reach me at any of those on Instagram. Um, also, uh, Capri Robson at chocolatesbest.com. I know that's really long, but you can mm -hmm. <laughs> find, that's my email. Um, please reach out. Of course, I'll give you the email if you reach out to me in my DMs. Um, 
and yeah, I'm open to, I'm, I'm really open to talk. I talk to people. Um, and so if you need someone to talk to, even if I can't do it myself, I'm going to try to connect you with someone that can. So it is perfect, man. That was dope, Capri. I mean, well, super producer said we can go as long as we want. It's black. Oh, ah, okay. <laughs> black history, you know, we're hanging out. But no, I just, I really appreciate it. I, I love seeing what you're doing. We're Thank talking you. to the best. Like, I remember meeting you, like I said, way back at camp. We had known yes. each other over on, like, you know, Instagram and Facebook. We had never met in person to camp. Got to yeah. know each other. I love everything you're doing. Y'all have my support. Anything you guys are doing always, you know what I mean? Got some, yes. I, got some more, I got some more special things this month for your competitors. I got a few more. Oh, actually, I'll tell you this. I can say it here. All the competitors that made the finals for Chocolate City's Best are yes. featured on Brown and Balance as some of the 28 black bartenders that you need to know. So, series yeah. that we great. So, every, every one of them, waiting on a couple of them to answer my email, but you know. Uh oh, tell me who. You know, I got well, numbers. I ain't going to blast them on fire. <laughs> text they're me. Gonna, you know, they're gonna text me. I got you. Yeah, they're going to get a nicely worded <laughs> email from me later on the day. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, man, I need I need your shit. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, I'm trying to I'm trying to use my platform because y'all are already on a dope platform. We just connecting like Voltron and right. trying to get y'all out there. You know, between CCB, B and B and Sorrell, we're trying yes. to get as many of us out this month as Period. Possible. It is so good to see. It was like it lights up the room, y'all. That's what that's yeah. what this is about. So so yeah. great. Thank y'all yeah. so much. It's good to see you, Josh. It's <laughs> you too. And then I'm hey, and then I'll see you next week. Yes. I'm gonna come out. I'll be out there at the end of the month. We're not gonna talk about that yet because we can't talk about it live. Right. But some special stuff happening in DC next weekend. And uh, actually, one of your competitors is involved in something that I'm doing that I asked him to be a part of. So yeah, yeah. we love it. We That's love it. That's why y'all's competition is so important, and I really appreciate y'all doing it for real. Cause y'all yeah. inspire me. Maybe there'll be a brown and balance competition in the future. Oh, fuck it, let's do it. We need more. Yeah. Yeah. Period. We need more. We gonna have a, we we might do that because I got enough notes today and I'm gonna ask you for an invoice for any other things I need to know and okay. then we go from there. All right, yeah. Yeah. we gonna get out of here. Everybody, right. like no, no, you ain't leaving yet. I gotta do the outro. I gotta do my. Oh, outro. sorry. Yeah. I'm here. I'm I'm here. Working on, I've been doing my hosting thing for a couple of years now, so I'm, I got my, I got my timing down a little bit. You know what I'm okay. saying? But yo, if you like content like this, yo, be sure to like, subscribe, love, share with your friends. Facebook.com backslash PDXCW. Um, Instagram, Portland Cocktail Week, PDXCW. Get at us. Follow Chocolate City's Best. Follow Capri. Follow me at Mr. Mixologist. That's my personal page. And by all means, if you ain't, you better be following Brown and Balance, man. That's the movement. And we all doing our thing. So with that being said, we out.